Good evening, everybody. <clears throat> I hope everybody is doing well. Okay, I think that is as good a place as any to start. So welcome everybody to the stream. Hope you're all having a lovely day and or evening, depending on where you're from. So tonight I thought we're going to actually switch it up a little bit. Tonight we're going to play some Soulstone Survivor. If you have played the Vampire Survivor game that came out a while ago, um, there's a couple like it that came out since. This, in my personal opinion, is the best of that style or that genre of game basically and you'll see why pretty soon so what i'm going to do is i'm going to switch over to the main game and in the meantime i'm going to just basically do the normal normal stuff uh for those of you that are not aware all of my past live streams do get posted um to my youtube channel so go and subscribe that way you can catch up on any past missed live streams um also on top of that try share the Twitch channel as much as you possibly can, help grow the community as much as you can, reach out to friends and family and just help spread the word. It really would mean a lot. Now, I do see that lately we've got Flavor Dave that followed as well. So Flavor Dave, thank you very much for the love. I really do appreciate it. So I have again, gone ahead and completely wiped my account so you guys will see all of the characters they're locked my blacksmith i've got nothing unlocked the runes i've got nothing unlocked the skill tree i have got nothing unlocked achievements i have got none and then my profile there's no save data at all so it is a completely new save and that's what i wanted to achieve so unfortunately that means we have to start off with the barbarian So we start with the first area, keep it simple, and let's get into it. Oh, hold on, that is one thing I did actually change. Um, was the opacity of the actual skills. Um, graphics, special effects, visibility. Okay, so for now we're going to turn that up. That does get affected eventually and does affect the graphics and makes it very difficult to see what the hell is going on but for now we're just going to turn it up just so we can see everything sorry just one more thing i just want to make sure we're looking good on the sound and then i also think i turned off the music <laughs> That might be a little bit too loud. Give me an SFA sec down. 
What's the sound over there? Yeah, we're looking good there. That's much better. So this is a pretty chilled game. Pretty nice and relaxed, but it does get intense. And you guys know me when it comes to some of the intense games, especially things like Risk of Rain. This is right up my alley of style of game. Okay, so do we want armor is improved, attacks may bleed, or lethality? So first things first, we need status. We need status effects on our attacks. So we'll go for Venomous. We've got our health at the bottom. We have got our uh, indicator for uh, how much XP we've gained. The yellow bar at the bottom. Most of this everybody already knows. Okay, now we actually come to an upgrade. So, suction bombs, quick strike, or bloodlust. Simply increases the movement speed, cost freakage of both you and nearby allies. Definitely that. made some stupid mistakes there and there's a possibility i'm going to pay the price for that so we have got resilience uh, multicast and behemoth so i think right now we're just going to go for behemoth it's a rare so uh let's go for uh expanse increases the area in which we do damage You know, because we're starting off a brand new character, I think we're going to go with the Chaos Golem. Just to have something that's going to take a lot of the aggro away from us. And then Multicast always... So critical strikes may now apply bleed. Yes, I think I'm going to want this later on when we get banishes and rerolls. We'll be able to get rid of stuff like um, merciless or resilience if we don't want it. That way it will never show up in the roster again in the next rotations. Uh, I think we'll go for heroic strike next. It's a nice big sweep of damage. Increased duration so this is normally where I would want to lock the expanse and take increased duration but obviously right now we've got to decide do we want the bigger area of effect or do we want the longer duration on the bloodlust so right now the movement speed is increased by 20% cost which is about 40% duration is 10 seconds cooldown is 24 we take the increased duration that'll obviously change uh, okay now we've got the first boss that shows up Pretty straightforward. Okay, got three levels, so let's go uh, multicast, subdue, and I'm gonna go with expanse.
Okay, let's go with some touch of ice. So that is going to be a 40% chance to apply slow. So we only need basically two of those and then we've got an 80% chance. So almost a guarantee that every single time we are going to get it. Now, do we want something with some range like Shadow Bolt? Yeah, I think we're going to go with Shadow Bolt for now. Just so we've got something that does some kind of range damage. Because right now everything we have is pretty much melee damage. And my Chaos Golem is still taking a lot of the aggro, which is nice. And I've got more than one, which is even better. Uh, let's go with... You see, these two only affect one attack, and that's my base attack, which I don't want. So I'm just going to go with Lethality. Now, I can't remember how I check my skills. Ah, there we go. So I have got a critical chance of 25%. That's not bad. One in four, effectively. So whenever we apply poison now, which we've already got, there's a very good chance that we can apply doom as well. And that's just going to be extra elemental damage. And there's the next boss we need to get out of that circle. We now, we don't really want to replace any of the skills that we've got over here at the bottom. So now we just replace choice with passive power-ups. So now it's just going to give us passive passives. So our critical chance is now going to go from 5% to 15% with this. Or we can go with a flat damage modifier, but that'll only affect these two. So now we should be on a critical chance of 35%. I'm not going to be able to get out of that. My movement speed at this point is still very, very slow. But there we go. Pass is dead. Collect all of it. I've got six upgrades. So, first things first, we're going to go with Magnetic to pick up everything for bigger Expanse. We're going to ignore those. We're going to go with Magnetic. One more touch of ice that we have got guaranteed slow. We're going to go with the skills activate more frequently so we attack a lot faster. We're going to grab another. Let's go with Powerful Strike. Causes more damage. Are we good? Uh, let's go with Expanse. Because I don't want something that does specific upgrade to one specific skill. I want an upgrade that is going to be doing a lot for everything. So... This is just for the column, just for the damage increase on the bolts, but this is a bigger, greater area of effect for everything. That means my swings are bigger, that means my attacks are bigger. That means the projectile bolts that get shot from the um, purple... Um, what is this called? The shadow bolt? The bolts are bigger. duration currently we have got a duration of 14.5 seconds with a cooldown of 22 seconds we obviously want that so that as soon as it ends it takes over again so we're going to go with buff duration that means we now are 19 seconds for 22 so there's only a 3.2 second downtime and that's okay one more of those would be very very nice Okay, clearly we don't want any of those. So what we can do now is we can either take multicast chance, it's going to be plus 24%, or we can go with the lethality that's going to give us chance to cause critical damage. You know, I'm going to go with this because that's going to take our critical chance to 50%. 
A 1 in 2 chance of there being a critical hit. Now the Barbarian is not one of my favorite characters, that's for sure. But it's good in a pinch and it's got some powerful builds if you can actually later on start controlling the build a lot better when you can banish and control certain things to spawn. It becomes a lot stronger. Okay, so now we've got the first um, additional element, which is spontaneous combustion. Set the enemies on fire. However, frailty is also very good. So all of your attacks may apply frailty, 10% chance. So we would need 10 of these to get a guaranteed um, affliction of fragility. And if something has been, has had fragility applied upon them, um, they get an additional 3% damage taken to them. But that damage is based on how many stacks you've got. So the more fragility you apply, the more damage they will take from your attacks. But for now, we're just going to go with burn. Okay, finally going to get some movement speed. So we're finally a little bit faster. And that messed up because I've now got this guy coming at me. That guy with the whirling blades can end your run very easily because I can't outmaneuver that. So, because I don't have any other choice, I'm going to go with some block power. I'm going to try and apply as much to this boss as we can. There we go, boss is dead. We've got three upgrades. So, there's another 30% chance for Venomous. Now, it doesn't show on here how many we've got, but it does show us down here how many of these we've applied already. All of our active or already selected things are down here. So, we've got this one. So, if we grab this now, we're going to go up to 60%. Multicast means we'll attack more than once. So, when this is scripted to attack once, Multicast means it might attack two or three times when it's scripted to run. But I think it's going to be better to go to Venomous to get a more guaranteed ailment on an enemy. And then Relentless. And then ignore that. And then let's go with Expansive. So now it's almost a guarantee that we're going to be applying poison to enemies. I do want to get to this health over here my health was getting very low i'm not expecting to win the very first run because there's five void bosses that i need to kill so i'm not expecting to win the very first run specifically with the fact that it's a brand new character uh, let's go powerful strikes more flat damage we obviously want to stay out of those dust clouds which i ran into and as you can see we've only got very little health left Let's go with some more agility, which is our movement speed. Movement speed, as, with it, as it is within Risk and Rain, movement speed is everything. Okay, we're still gonna ignore that. Damage increase from that is fine, but a nice the experience gain is 50% more. And we can pick up from bigger area. Means we can level up faster. We obviously need to run away from all of that. So I'm just trying to stack as much as I can on team right now while his back's towards me. Let's go with greater areas. That's okay. He's just going to take continuous tick damage. We don't have the health to stick around here for too long. 
Page 9 is still taking fragility. And we died. But now we've unlocked... Um, eliminated at least one voyage. Now we've unlocked a new character. Four achievements completed. Got a new ability. Two new abilities. So now those two new abilities will start applying with in into our next roster. Into the next time we run. And these are basically the materials and the soul stones collected. These soul stones, we go back to the menu. These soul stones is what we use to apply to our skill tree. And the skill tree is not character specific. It applies to every single character that you've got. Regardless of which one you're running. And there's a cost. For example, this is going to cost me 500 of those. But as you move through them, so obviously first and foremost, increase your damage modifier by 5%. 5% more damage for 500, I've got it. So we'll buy it. Simple. Next one is 1,000, we can afford it. But as we start moving to other things, you can see it's going to start costing us soul stones instead of minor soul stones. So as always, we'll just go around in a circle. We'll grab the three base ones. And we've got 4,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in a circle. I'm going to do exactly the same. Additional 10%, 9%, 30. That means our starting health is better per round. We do more damage at the start of each round. And we move 9% faster than what we did. And that's a good basis for us to start off with. We can potentially look at trying to move into other things right now. And for me, the damage section, while it's important, this section is more important. The movement speed, the cast frequency, increase the amount of minor soul stones you earn by 10% each round, the amount of XP that you get, and gives you a chance to get new skills when you level up. And then later on, as you start mastering certain characters, you see there's yellow nodes over here. They start spreading in to additional specific upgrades for that character. So center tree is all characters. Yellow links, specific to the character. And then this increases the runic power. Runes are things that you can apply to each run. The total amount of runes is calculated over here. So if I had to select... Okay, well, I can't select either one of them. Because I don't have... Yeah, I don't have any unlocked. All right. Oh, let's go to the character. And also, you've got to buy your characters. So if I wanted to use the next character that I unlocked, I've got to buy it for 5,000. Obviously, I don't have the cash for it. So we'll just have to stick with this one. I'm just quickly minimizing the game. There's one or two things I want to check. Just to make sure we're looking good. Yeah, we're still looking good. Okay, so now it's just the case. Oh, and then also when it comes to the blacksmith, we can start making different weapons. Each weapons apply or start off will run completely differently. They do actually have passive effects. And I see we've got someone else in the stream. Welcome. Don't be shy. Say hello. You're all welcome. So let's change up the map a little bit. Let's fight somewhere else. And what I like about this game, <clears throat> over something like Vampire Survivor, is you don't take damage running into the enemies. They physically have to attack you, and the attack has to land to do damage. start off with some venomous
we want next it's time to go around you causing damage and applying fragility and stun fragility is massive like i said because enemies end up taking extra damage so i'm gonna take that for sure obviously the stomp range is very tiny very tiny but as we get that increased area of effect upgrades would always comes up we'll be able to there we go have a greater area of effect by 10 percent there we go that means our stomp's going to get bigger meaning we'll be able to apply fragility at a much bigger pace much wider range sorry uh let's go with magnetic so this i absolutely love flurry throws daggers in the target direction causing 20 damage and applying bleed every 0 0.2 seconds Now you can get that with cast speed. You can get this to basically be firing 24-7 and every dagger counts as a hit. So you can imagine how quickly you can stack ailments with that. And it automatically causes bleed, which is amazing. So I'm not interested in any of these. Actually, area of effect on the stomp is nice. No, no, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to go with fragility. I want to try and get fragility up as quickly as I can. If I can get that up, it means the enemies are going to take more damage. And then I think we're going to go with subdue, which is more bleed. Because I've already got bleed. The more bleed I can stack, the better it becomes. Movement speed. All about that survivability. Uh, fragility let's test the theory let's find the boss I don't want any of these but I'm just going to go with thunder strike for now as you can see that applied all the stasis that I had very very quickly to the boss but I fucked up a lot in that, and because I don't have movement speed, I took a lot of damage. So, area of effect on the daggers, yes. Multicast on that, no. So we're just going to go with Behemoth. And then let's go with... Hmm, let's go with Bloodlust. chance i'm not going to worry so much about critical chance on this damage increase i'm not worried about it i think i'm going to get i needed to apply things faster bigger aoe i've got on it the faster it'll apply and i just needed to be shooting constantly so damage increase this is a flat damage increase that'll be on both my yes so that's 20 and 40 percent if i select that that becomes 28 and 56 percent nice and it increased the damage of my daggers which is a nice little benefit I'm not gonna worry about that for now okay there we go we want to start applying some burn as well Yes, let's go with this. 50% chance that whenever I apply poison, I apply doom as well. Guaranteed. Having a 2 for 1 special in how I stack damage is always going to be a, a no-brainer. So now we're going to be up to 50% on burn already. And ignore that. I'm going to go for movement speed. 
And then I think we, this one we're going to ignore fragility. Do I ignore fragility and go for... I think I'm going to go for relentless instead. So I can attack more. Attack faster. Relentless skills more frequently. This just means I can get these daggers out faster. Okay, let's see if we start attacking the boss with this. Look at the boss's health. Look how quickly things are stacking onto that boss. And that's why it's so powerful. Six upgrades. So we are going to switch the bleeding bomb for that. We are going to go with relentless. We're going to go with movement speed. We're going to ignore that multicast movement speed multicast on the daggers for sure and now let's see how things start looking so i'm a lot faster and we're stacking things a lot faster now yeah i'm happy with this area of effect of the daggers 100 percent now the daggers are also going to be taking up a lot more of the screen space Start working my way down. Okay, so if we grab this, we're gonna be up to yeah, because already got 50% because I got 25 times two plus that we're gonna have 75% burn. So I need to grab this one more time and then I'm good on burn. I'm not gonna worry about grabbing it in the future at all. Because I at least know that almost guaranteed I'm gonna be applying burn onto enemies now. So I got my health up a little bit because I find one of the crystals. Relentless. And I'm now also going to start moving on the map because I want to start finding these gems. As you can see on the left hand side, those are gems that we are going to need for when we want to start crafting other weapons. Behemoth is more health. Let's, let's go with fragility. We've got three already, so that's going to be a 40% chance to apply fragility. That's not bad. So we've already got the 5,000 uh, mini souls. Mini soul stones that we need. In order to actually buy the next character. Okay, so Venomous, we've only got one, so this is going to put us up to a 60% chance. Now, we've almost got a guarantee to apply um, both poison and fire to all of our enemies. And yes, it's only 60 and 75%, but the fact that we apply with every dagger hit, the frequency of hits means it's almost a guarantee. I want to stay out of the... And that's why movement speed is important, because later on... These kind of bats show up that end up doing damage, and I can't get away from it. So let's go with multicast. Because I'm not able to move fast enough to be able to stay out of that... Influence? Of that circle influence? What's the word I'm looking for? There we go. Start stacking that damage. It's up to 150 bleed, 160 bleed. And it's dead. Another six upgrades. Let's hit it from there. So we want to grab any burn because we've already got that. We don't apply any of this. So I'm just going to grab the burn because I don't want any of the other two. We're going to grab some magnetic. Touch our eyes to apply some slow as well. Resilience. That's only going to be multicast on that. Multicast. Let's go with just a base damage increase. The 
base damage increase means that everything just does a little bit extra damage. Let's go with some more fragility. Now we're up to 50%. So if we can stack fragility on something, it means they're going to take a certain percentage increase in damage. Currently we are up to 5 stacks, which means 15% increased damage that enemy will take if they've been railed. Uh, let's go with... Armor's improved and... Shit, this is kind of shitty. Uh, let's go with... Um, attack speed. run through the center take all the damage in the world because that was smart okay we're gonna start grabbing fateful strike as well obviously we want to be applied doom there's only 20 percent so we at least want to get three of these let's go with let's use skills more frequently boss to deal with and that's what I'm trying to stay away from up to 180 bleed 56 fire let's go with some more fragility obviously the more stacks they are the more damage they will take there we go boss is dead two upgrades I want agility and another fateful strike. Okay, we're up to 12,000 minus souls. So we're going to be able to unlock the character as well as potentially do some upgrades on the skill tree. So this is a flat damage increase. It's not affecting. Okay, so skills that are affected by this will only be subdue and shrapnel bomb. So I'm not interested in that. Area of effect of this is definitely going to be a big thing. Because now my daggers are going to start taking up all the screen. You've got four out of the five um, void bosses eliminated. Let's go with okay, with combustion we've already maxed out. We're already hundred percent for that. So just go with some uh, damage increase for subdue. the center try and get as many of the orbs as we can okay movement speed as always better we move safer we should be so in the top we about to call in the boss in like a few seconds we've got 20 more Monsters to eliminate and boss. Okay, let's stack what we can as quickly as we can. Great, thank you, boss. 
but I'm just gonna go in circles right now because it's gonna be the fastest way for me to get to the boss and apply the damage that I needed to. But I need to be careful because it's leaving. There we go. Everything's dead. Stage has been cleared, so let's grab fragility and let's grab another fateful strike. So now you have got one of two options. You can either go into infinite mode where it just continues and continues and continues until you eventually die or you can go into a very hard mode where you're basically just fighting bosses but obviously you can imagine the payout is a lot better but we're not going to be stupid we're going to end up taking the win for this and we're going to end up ending the run so reach prestige level five with a barbarian Yeah, we've got 17,000 minor souls, and we've got two of each except for the rogue soul stones. So, I think first things first. Well, we've also unlocked another character. We've now got the Houndmaster. So, let's grab. So, you know what? Let's grab this guy. Unlock the Pyromancer. So, we'll run with the Pyromancer next. Blacksmith, obviously, if we... I just have to select the character. Blacksmith. Pyromancer, you can see it's also got their own weapons to use. Runes? I don't think we've unlocked a rune yet. No, we haven't. Skill tree, we're going to come back to this now. And achievements. Yeah, there's a lot. And I haven't unlocked many. Yeah. <laughs> 14 out of the 270 that there are. And most of the achievements are tied to some kind of perk, weapon, uh, class, skill point, action. So it's actually a good game to try and hunt down um, achievements. Because it will probably end up giving you something. So we come back to the skill tree. And let's have a look. So... We start going to the damage, 1,500 there, 1,500 there, and more health. So, that's a base that I personally like to start at it. Get it 3 out of 5 on the 3 foundations of everything. Now, from this point onwards, I'm probably going to go for increased pickup range. Pickup range means I pick up the orbs faster, meaning I level up faster, meaning I can potentially stack more upgrades before I start getting to the point where the enemies become too difficult to kill so I'm going to grab one of those increase the amount of minor soul stones you get always because you're obviously going to be paying for it in minor soul stones for a lot of the base things so the faster you get that out the way the cheaper it becomes so we're going to grab two of those and then of course XP would be the next one to go for. I've only got 2,400 left. We need 7,500 for that. And we gain XP a lot faster, meaning we level up faster. Meaning, once again, we can stack abilities and skills a lot faster. However, we've still got 2,400 left. What can I get for 2,400? I can increase my damage, a flat base. Increase my block power, increase my armor, increase all health received from health crystals by 5. Now that's 20,000. So you can see the importance of this one. It's going to come into play very, very quickly. So I think I am just going to buy a flat movement speed increase. And now in order to get the final one, I need one red crystal, which I've got. So I'm going to spend it. I have maxed out my movement speed skill on this tree at 15% increase. So, straight off the bat, I'm going to be a lot faster. So, let's run a fight with the pyromancer. So, as you can see, we have finished off this. Now, on an incomplete run, you'll see it like this. As you, as you know, we died on this one. Scorching Valley, we haven't completed it. However, the caves of um, Dalzog, we have finished. That means we can start applying curses. Curses makes it so that our payout is a lot better, but obviously it makes the mode a lot harder. Lifeless Void reduces all healing received by 12%. 
explosive golems will appear early every single match unholy reinforcements so elite enemies now spawn 10 percent more frequently and revenge of the void every time you kill an enemy there is a 10 percent chance of a meter falling near your position and that meter does quite a bit of damage and then there's different tiers to work through and eventually the bonuses you get from this is like 500 percent minus soul um soul stones and you start getting access to a lot more of the rarer materials that you need in order to upgrade weapons etc etc so there is actually an incentive to run through the curses list but first things first you need to unlock the actual list so i'm gonna go back to the first map and let's see if we can get the first map completed with the pyromancer I think let's go back to this and let's just put this back up. Yeah, that works. And I can actually see the attacks a lot clearer. So obviously fire, we want to line up as many enemies as we can. Yeah, there's our first one. So we already apply burn, but if we can apply burn, actually, yeah, I'm gonna go with burn. If I can apply more burn faster, they'll tick through faster, meaning they'll die faster. Meaning I get access to all their little lovely XP a lot faster as well. a nice little group Ooh, shitty options if anything I think I'd rather just go with poison bolt Ice, let's slow them all down a bit. Okay, let's start stacking some venom as well. So now we've got fire, frost, and poison. And we just need to get those percentages up to be more of a guarantee. Arcane Sparks. I love this. It goes all over the place. Now you can imagine with area of effect and multicast on those. It does quite a bit. Damage increase on that. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go for a flat 5% damage. So, yes, this is 45% damage on that skill this is a five percent damage to everything so cooldown is five seconds you know what let's go for this let's focus on the on that skill area of effect oh yes Magic missiles. I'll take that as well. I'm gonna go with 
Monte cost. We're gonna try and stack onto this boss as quickly as we can. We don't have a lot to stack, so we're gonna be relying a lot on just raw damage. There we go. Boss is dead. Grab the upgrades. So magnetic, yes. Then we're gonna go with the shadow bolt as well, and then we're gonna go with frailty. Now, even though this is called the pyromancy, you can obviously see we're not exactly doing a lot of fire attacks. The speciality, when you do class-specific damage, comes later on. When you can start building towards a certain thing. But you need certain runes unlocked in order to make that happen. But we'll get there. Chain lighting, very very nice one. The self-explanatory. Lighting that chains between enemies. Gonna go with magnetic again. Pick a pickup range. Any faster we level up. Let's go with a second venomous. We're up to 60% on that. do the death no no actually i don't want any of that do i want the faster cast frequency or do i want the bigger area of effect i think for now i'm going to go with the frequency let's get the damage output quick and then we'll increase the area that it affects let's go with fire so that means we're up to 50 percent burn Multicast for just about everything, but not the one that I want. I think I'm going to take it because it's the best option that I've got in that list. I don't want any of those either. So I want attack speed on this 100%. There's a 4%, so I lost a second. That's nice. Uh, we're gonna go with magnetic. Skills are used more frequently and attack speed on this again. We're down to 3.1 seconds. Uh, greater area of effect. Course. Area of effect. That's a big upgrade. It's a 30% modifier upgrade, and that affects the two things that I really want. So, yes, we're going to take that. We're going to ignore that, and we are going to go with. I think let's take Venomous one more time, get it up to 90%. So now we've got a guaranteed poison with all my skills. Touch of ice. We're now going to have 80%, so we've got a guarantee. F um, slow. Anything over 75%, I consider almost a guarantee. Uh, let's go with just a flat damage increase. Not much, it's 5%, but it's still a damage increase. There we go, that's a 20% damage increase. Or oh, we can go with another attack speed on this. I'm gonna go with attack speed. We're down to 2.8 seconds. Okay, so now it's not becoming worth it. Because where we gained a second last time, we now only lost 0.3 seconds. 0.3 of a second. So. Let's go with frailty. If we can start stacking frailty, obviously that's also gonna be good. Agility, as always. 
in my opinion, if you see agility on the list, it always takes preference over everything. Unless you've got like a legendary. Not that. Don't want attack speed. We're going to go with Faithful Strike. Let's see if we start on getting that proc as well. And you can see that I'm trying to stick somewhat in the center of the pack because of this blue ability that I've got, the Arcane Sparks. It doesn't go out in front of me, it spreads out from the center outwards. Obviously, that's going to be beneficial. Okay. Vicious Strike is phenomenal because you have a 100% chance to deal a critical strike on enemies with full health. So the first time you hit an enemy, it's a guaranteed critical. Let's go with bigger area projectile. dash multiple times now this is where you've got to decide which one you want while movement speed is important yes the dash to be able to get out of the because you might have just dashed and your movement speed might not be the most and then you've got a boss's big aoe attack about to happen and you can almost guarantee you're not going to get out of it by having that second dash available might save you so i'm going to take this instead because now i can dash twice in my opinion, it's a little bit more important than movement speed. Okay, now because we are doing 90% charge to poison, I'm definitely taking this. Because whenever we apply poison, we apply doom as well. And there's a 50% chance of it. So we've got a 90% chance to apply poison, so then they get poison ailment. Then as we stack poison, there's a 50% chance that per stack of poison, it applies doom. With some of our attacks, we're going to be stacking 20, 30, 40 stacks of two. So it's almost a guarantee. I don't know if you can see it on some of the enemies here, where my mouse cursor is. That's doom that has been stacked. area of effect Flame wave is nice, but it, we're pretty late into the run. So I highly doubt that this will be beneficial for us in any form or way to take. You know what? Fuck it. Let's just take it. So we're going to take that and we're going to replace the first ability. So now we do a big explosion around us every now and then. Another 5% increase. Damage increase on our area at the moment, 100%. effect and now we need to run and that is the importance of having that second dash to 
be able to get out of that fear of attack as quickly as possible. Frailty. Powerful strike. It's another flat damage yeah, increase. Okay, we've got one more boss to fight, and then we've technically completed this area. I'm not going to borrow bother with critical because we've got a 5% chance. This is only going to give me a 10%. It's only going to be up to 15%. We've got one boss left. I'd rather go with something like multicast. on this and what we said about the attack speed the benefit that i'm getting from it is not worth it anymore i'm just gonna go with multicast for everything and now just like last time i'm gonna start moving towards the outskirts of the map see if i can't start picking up some from james that we need for crafting later on. As you can start to notice, the damage has started falling off massively. So I want to try and deal with the boss as quickly as we can. Let's get whatever we can stacked. Let's go with skills more frequently. so I'm gonna get out of here let the tick damage work okay so the boss lost nearly 15 to 20 thousand health just because of everything that we stacked on him with everything I've stacked so far that should be enough to kill him there we go boss is dead And now we can just say relentless and damage. Because regardless, I am done. Hey, what up, Maestro? How are you doing this evening, brother? That's good, that's good. I'm glad to hear it. Did you work this evening? So I'm just turning the game sound down a bit. <clears throat> oh god damn, that sounds amazing. Jalapeno flavored bacon snacks and Pepsi. I don't have any snacks. I am just sitting here with a glass of Coke Zero. No work today. Okay, I right, so just been a nice relaxed day for you. That's pretty awesome.
So I need you to excuse me for two seconds. I'm not going anywhere. I just need to change my stream because I want to check something. I need to check if... My purchase has gone through yet. Um, so that was an hour and a, an hour and a half ago. Oh, it's an hour ago. Okay, so I'm going to give it another hour. Should take up to about two hours. <clears throat> Yeah, like a weird little thing happened. I bought Helldivers 2, but it's telling me that it could take up to two hours to process my payment. I just need to be patient. But at least I've got like the receipt and like proof that I paid for it, etc, etc. So, yeah. Because <laughs> I'm definitely going to start streaming some um, Helldivers. Okay, now I can come back to the main game. Okay, so what did you say there? You went to the dollar store and bought a bag... And then the cashier said I would get a second bag for free. Oh, hell yes. Now, brother, there's some deals you just do not pass up on. And that's one of them. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed, we got one additional follower. A gentleman by the name of Flava Dave. Flavor Dave. Don't know why I said Flava. Flava Dave, he's a new follower. So much love to that individual. He followed yesterday. And the reason why I'm going into Helldivers is one, the game doesn't look too bad. I actually think I could enjoy it. And I need to seriously start maybe going into more of some of the mainstream games. Because I think all of the games that I've been playing are very niche side games that not a lot of people know about. And by going to some of the more mainstream games, I might attract a bigger following. Maybe. I need to try and f figure out something to do to expand the, the, the follower and the viewer base. Because, I mean, prior to Flavor Dave that followed me yesterday, the previous follower was JJ. And that was 16 days ago. Um, so each bag was 250 grams each. Nice. Very, very nice. So I'll turn the music down a bit. There we go. Okay, that seems a little bit more normal. I can actually hear what the hell's going on now. Okay, so we're gonna go for some more base damage, some more base healing. And I've got two red stones, so let's just max out the healing and max out the damage. Okay, so the three bases are done. Now we need to start expanding. Yeah, you see, I have never, ever, ever played a WWE game. Never been interested. I hated it as a kid. Like, I couldn't stand it on TV. So, no, it's definitely not a game I'm interested in. <laughs> you know, I can't stand that at all. Like, there's very few sport games or games to do with sports that i will play like i i don't play fifa i don't play madden i don't play i don't play nba i don't do wwe like the only sports styled games that i will play is something like formula one i think that's it yeah that's literally it is formula one and that's like with the steering wheel and everything Apart from that, I don't do sports games.
I want to unlock my huntress as soon as I can. My hunter as soon as I can. 100 elite enemies. Let's go back to the barbarian. Blacksmith. Reach level 10. Prosperity. Okay. I'll do this. Fight. Let's go to the next area. No rest for the wicked. Mm, what's that? Let me Google this quickly. Uh, no rest for the wicked. She sings like morning. My sister true. She laughs like noon My sister cries She drowned this evening But still visits by the light of the moon We prayed for summer We prayed for fall To prosper, to love, to forgive not quite the same okay well that is definitely a game that's going on to my wish list god damn okay Oh, fuck me. Okay, that actually looks pretty awesome. So it's an action RPG. Ori and Blind Forest. I don't know Ori and Blind Forest. Precision-based combat. Epic um, human saga. Handcrafted world. Moment respite. Online multiplayer. Three events by side and campaign on a co-op. Every quest boss share, share with you. Or you can simply venture off and do as they please. I hope it's not going to be very focused on like it has to be co-op. It's something that's kind of pissing me off with a lot of the games that are currently being made. Is that... <laughs> I understand obviously having friends and that kind of shit that you want to play your game with is... A big focus but i want to be able to play something solo i want to be able to run something solo without having to rely on the thing that i don't have friends <laughs> i 
No, but on a serious note, though, that game does look fun. I think I'll probably wait for it to release. Um, see if there is the single player option to it. And if there is, then definitely grab it. And please, if you have other recommendations like that for me, let me know. 100% let me know. I'm gonna go with Bloodlust. Yeah, I don't like those games. Like there was what it was Witchet, um uh, wasn't it originally based on like a Half Life two like Gary's mod or something like that, uh, where it was a uh, prop hunt. Like, yeah, that kind of shit. Nah. Yeah, no, no, no. I don't like those. I don't. It's entertaining to watch. I get it. It can be fun. Just not my type of game. That's just a personal preference. Shockwave totem. Yeah, let's grab a shockwave totem. Oh, so the shockwave totems don't actually draw aggro. I thought they did. Good. Sherwood Boulders. Looks like it could be a game for you. What's it called? Robin Hood. Sherwood Boulders.
actually doesn't look bad. That actually really doesn't look bad. It's, uh, what is it? It is. Oh, when, did it, when did this come out? 29th of February, 2024. That was what, like seven days ago, eight days ago? This really doesn't look bad at all. What am I thinking of? It's it's almost like it's a mixture of Valheim, Risk of Rain, and Medieval Dynasty. With the fact that you can not only control your character, but control the town and settlement that you're in. And then also, like, it looked like there was quite a bit that you could do with like the upgrades or like character skills. That doesn't look bad at all. So the developer was Mean Astronauts. So the same developer that made... Oh, wow. Okay. Okay, this developer has been has been responsible for quite a couple of games. Published by Playway, I say. Oh, so these might be just be the publishing houses. Okay. Well, that's actually pretty interesting. That is also definitely a game I'm gonna I'm gonna have to. Can you whisper me the name of these games as well, please? Just so that I've got them somewhere that I can remember. <laughs> that way I can keep track of the games that I definitely need to have a look at or add to my wish list. And I see this currently as okay, there's not a sale on the game itself. But there's a game on like bundles and stuff. Hmm, okay. Definitely something we're going to have a look at. Okay, we've got enough of that. Let's go frequency. Thank you very much. Let's grab a touch of ice, apply some slow. Oh, nothing good. Really. I just sacrificed movement speed. Fuck. I was not paying attention. Uh, definitely, let's replace... Heroic Strike with this first attack. Thank you. Magnetic, I need to level up faster. Let's go multicast on just about everything. I don't think I'm going to do very good with this run. Yeah, that's going to hurt. There we go. Right behind him. I'm good. Okay, guys should be dead. I'm almost dead. Multicost. There we go. 44% chance to multicost. That's good. And that applies to everything. Expanse. Okay, we can finally start getting some ble some some burn applied as well. Three level ups. I'm not gonna take the flurry again. We've already done that previously, so we'll just stick with what we've got right now. So we're gonna go with the base increase damage. I'm going to go with Agile and then base increase damage again. Whenever you apply bleed, that would be nice, but I'm not applying bleed. I've got like zero chance to apply bleed at the moment. Uh, we've already... Uh, let's grab this. Now it's at 90%. We don't have to worry about 
that any further. So now we can ignore poison the next time we see it. Go with magnetic. Agile. To area effect. Those vortex vortices would be nice if it was area effect was bigger. But it looks like they're not affecting the bigger enemies, which could be problematic. Yep, poison applies doom. Always a good thing to do. Head for strike. Frequency. Let's go with another combustion. That's fifty percent, and then multicast on my. Ooh, multicast. So that's legendary. That's definitely going to be phenomenal. But multicast on this one ability. Or a nice big multicast on everything. I think multicast on everything is going to be worth it more. Yeah, that was a good, that was a good decision to make. And let's go with frailty. Okay, I think I'm going to start running the border of the map. Start finding a lot of these resources that I need. Okay, we've got health up here, so I'm going to grab that as well. See, now this would have been nice to have earlier on, but I've already got one slow. So we'll just take expense. Make the explosions bigger, make the... It makes everything bigger. Bigger is always better. And that's what she said. Okay, I don't think I chose the best skills because I'm constantly on the offensive. Poison we've already got guaranteed, so let's go relentless. I think I'm going to switch out Death Vortex for the Totems. The Totems don't feel like they're doing much. Damage increase on everything. Nope, area of effect on the vortexes. The tornadoes. Outside of the big influence. That should be good. There you go. Boss is dead. Three upgrades. Agility. Frailty. And magnetic.
Here we go. If they get stacked up like that, it's nice. It's just trying to get them stacked up and actually having the enemies that can be affected by it. Be affected there. Let's go with Relentless. Cast more frequently. Okay, so we've already collected 100 and what? 100 and almost 40. Of whatever the hell that is. I don't remember what that is called. It's a form of a souls though. Good evening, JJ. How are you doing this evening, brother? Finally, up to 75% on burn. Pretty damn good, thanks. Well, that's good. What's got your evening so good? You get some good news. Hey. I'm probably going to die, yeah. I'm not paying attention right now. I only need to kill one more boss, and that's technically done. Um, Multicost. So, JJ, you can't afford the question. This looks like a more cartoony Puri. <laughs> it's a top-down version of Risk of Rain. Oh, there's health over here, finally. Okay, I got some health. Not a lot, though. Did you ever play Vampire Survivor when it came out? This is a more refined version of Vampire Survivor, in my personal opinion. In my very, very little humble opinion. I'm gonna die. I'm going to die. I'm not beating this boss. That was stupid. I ran through the fire. I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die. And there's no health on the screen anyway. And I'm dead. Okay, let me need that. I got a new character. Nice. Yo, JJ, you still haven't told us, brother. Why such a good evening? You said you're doing pretty damn good. What made it so pretty damn good? very nice what was the final score and who did they play and you're kind of not wrong with the whole poe thing i mean it does have a skill tree like poe as well just the starting phase is very small and as you go into a specific character it grows
I do not have the money to be able to afford. Oh, I can actually buy this. Hmm. Yeah, let's buy this character. And we've unlocked Spellblade. Well, let's select this character. And we fight. Let's actually try and get some currency. Let's go to the first area and let's make it harder. 20% more soul stones. Let's try and get that out of the way. Do either of you know of a YouTube channel or something like that that has got like royalty free music but like decent royalty free music? Because I was thinking like it'll be it'll be nice to actually like specifically with some games to have like different music in the background, but also I don't want to get copyright claimed. the problem is that just like on that i've noticed just like on um twitter people say they artists but they aren't because they're just stealing shit from other people that's how i've got like a hundred fucking followers on um, twitter and like 90 of them are all artists however um, with royalty free music, I have tried searching that and more than once I have actually come across where they've clearly just taken a very popular song, remixed it a bit and then call it royalty free. Like that's looking for shit. Uh, there's a button or something in the Streamlabs or OBS to ever use that allows you to play music live, but it doesn't come back up on stream replays. Oh shit. See, I don't use Streamlabs, but I'll, s I'll do a bit of research later in to see if it's something I can do for OBS. Because I use Stream Elements for my overlays, but then OBS for my actual recording software and management of those overlays i'll have to have a look into that Death Vortexes. Ah, uh, flat damage increase is always going to be a winner. Oh, 
nice agility and let's go with titan cleaver i put a thing in dms okay uh let me have a look over here quickly Okay, cool. I'll have a look at that a little bit later. That's quite a bit to read for right now. But thank you very much for that. Appreciate it, JJ. Okay, so we can actually have some some tunes while we're jamming. Have either of you guys ever heard of Jules TV? Okay, so first of all, hear me out before you people start start judging me. So it is that's the YouTube channel, Jules TV Kids Songs and Nursery Rhymes. <laughs> so hear me out before you judge. So Jules TV, I, th I think I saw it on a on a on a Twitter reel or it was on Instagram or something like that. But I saw a video, and basically what these guys do is what this channel does is they take your popular nursery rhymes so like the three little pigs or the wheels on the bus go round and round like they take your popular nursery rhymes and they add a modern flow to it a modern flow a modern beat to make it one entertaining for the modern generation of children and two also so that a fucking parent doesn't go ape shit doesn't go mental listening to it like Hold on, let me do this quickly. Um, so, I don't really care if I'm going to get into trouble for this one, but, like, you need to hear this. I'm just going to start, like, the beginning of it. Just waiting for a stupid ad to pause. Okay, let me do this. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not me, not me. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not me, not me. Who's afraid of the big bad wolf? Not me, not me, not me. What's poppin'? What's shaking? Man, I'm in a mood for bacon. You don't have to have, you don't have to fight. The more you run, the bigger you make my appetite. Okay, so. <laughs> so I'm not going to play any more of it. It's just. Go check it out. It is actually pretty freaking awesome. So whether it is your taste of music or not, is not really like the, the big focus on it. I don't know what's worse. <laughs> like, hear me out. I just like the fact that somebody decided to take the nursery rhymes and the kid stories that we grew up with, and they decided to put a new twist on it, a modern twist on some of our most popular nursery rhymes. Because, I mean, think about it. If you're a parent, I show, like, how many times have you... I don't know if it's that of the normal version. I was like, that's one of them. There are others. But... How many times have you heard the same song being played over and over and over? And it's, it's you can't even enjoy it. Like you can't even jam with or, yeah. I don't know if I'm just not making sense, but when I saw it for a moment, I was like, that's pretty cool. Like, if I had kids and that song was jamming in the background and my kid was happy, like, I'd be jamming with 
Yeah, sorry, that was just a random thing that popped into my head. But fair enough, not everybody's cup of tea. I love the fact how I had five viewers in the stream and the moment I played that song it dropped to three. <laughs> well, yeah, that was just an example, but like take five minutes, just go have a look at the YouTube channel and just just like see what they've got. If you don't want, you don't want to, but yeah. I just thought it was pretty cool. And I love the fact that you refer to your 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 child as mini maestro. <laughs> A scholar in the making. Don't forget many master it. She would jam along. <laughs> nice. Now I'm going to absolutely laugh if I get a copyright strike for that 10 seconds of playing that song. Wouldn't be surprised, but... Fuck it. That let's just go with multicast and everything. Empty would make their own songs probably better than a nursery rhyme. Maestro, you got some musicians. Future magicians breeding in that house. Am I in a couple of years going to be like, hey, I know that dude. That's a flat damage increase. Yeah, I'll take that. Like, I think that is one thing, like, I'm very jealous of. Is people that can play a musical instrument. Like, I really, really, really wish I knew how to play a musical instrument. But I am beyond useless when it comes to... Like, I can't read music, first of all. And secondly, like, I don't think I've got the, the skill, the patience to try and learn the instrument. And funnily enough, like the one instrument I've always wanted to learn how to play well is a piano. Just never given the opportunity, never was able to be put in a situation where I can try and learn. But yeah, I am very jealous of people. Two, two kinds of people. One, the kind of people that obviously can play an instrument. And then two, people that can sing. Like you guys have heard my voice. I sound like a dying moose. Can you imagine what it sounds like if I start singing? Ooh, I'm gonna die. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> you could always rap. <laughs> no, for that you also need a certain level of flow and a certain level of like rhythm.
I mean, if you don't have that, you end up with the shit we've got today. The mumble rap that's considered art by some. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to survive this run. <laughs> Fair enough. I think JJ will revel in any opportunity to kick me in the shin. I've got seven health. Yeah, I'm dead. No, I could see that one coming a mile away. Okay, so the boss actually killed me with one of his incarnate of ice. Most of my damage, though, I lost from the elite sand golems. Okay. Okay, so no new characters, nothing new really in the blacksmith. I still don't have any runes. The skill tree, we're getting there. Things are just starting to get pretty expensive. And I think I'm going to go for the one that's going to be the most beneficial in the way of cost. And then I can finalize it as well to 50%. So that's max that as well. That's a 50% increase in the amount of soul stones that I own. Not bad. <laughs> yeah, tells me how I died. And then what's worse. It's got a complete recap of how you did So this is the run where I died. I only survived for eight minutes. I had, okay, I did have four curses active at the same time. So this made it a whole lot harder. No runes. And then that is a recap of how much damage I did. So my dash, my slash was 1.4, 1.5. Effective damage, total damage, number of hits, and time active. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true. And then you end up dying to it like another two or three times before you actually end up finding out. Oh fuck, I've got zero fire resistance. So for example, this victory that I did... Um Yeah, total damage about 2 million on the poison bolt, 1.9 million on the arcane. And these were active for just about roughly the same amount of time. So this shows that the fire slash, because it was active basically from the beginning, because I switched it off 90% of the way through, the fire slash active for let's say 8 minutes. So the same amount of time as the chain lightning, yeah, the damage output is almost a million less. Let's say 600,000, so it could put out, it, it did about 600,000. It hit almost a thousand times more. So the fire slash is shit. Do the forbidden build. What's the forbidden build? So, I don't have the um, capability yet, yet, keyword, to be able to create a very specific build, unless I completely get very lucky. Later on through the skill tree, the ends over here, for example, this one. Uh, no, is it that one? Yeah, like this. Allows me to banish certain power-ups. Um, later on, skills, along with some of the runes, 
allows me to get rid of and specify and select certain or increase the chances of certain skills showing up so that I can actually build something specific. Yeah, you see, and that's just it. Like, I don't think there's a cap in this game as to how big your area of effect can become, how quickly you can attack, how much damage over time you can do. It's just, are you going to have the luck to be able to stack it? So let's try it out. So let's go with a impact character. So let's take the barbarian. Let's fight. We'll just take... Oh, let's take the ice stage. And let's focus down one specific. With the damage over time, do you want to focus on everything? Like fire, um, fire, frost, poison, everything? Yeah, I can go later on. I can control a lot better as to like what I can do right now because I've got no ruins and that kind of stuff. Because I completely wiped the character. Like, hold on, let's do this. Um, I'm just gonna surrender this quickly. Let's go back to my menu. Just gonna do that quickly. <laughs> Uh, give me two seconds. I'm quickly gonna switch. Just gonna do that just so I can exit this. Give me two seconds. Be with you right now. So this is my other character. Yeah. A bit more work has been done. So with this one, uh, quite a bit more work has been done. I've got a lot more souls, a lot more everything. My achievements, I've got quite a few of them. Some of my runs that I did with these... The damages were in the many, many millions. And I've got every single character, including the knight, scythe, and a lot of the stuff has already been grabbed. And they prestiged like 80. So this is my normal account. This is what I use when I normally play. And then also runes. As you can see, I've got quite a few. But the problem is I haven't played this in a while. So I don't know what is new and what isn't new. So for example, let's choose. So my barbarian on this one is our most played character. So if I go barbarian. And then critical damage chance. Okay, now let's go runes. Uh, increase all damage caused by 50%. See, I can't remember. The layout and everything has changed. Pick multiple times. Yes, I want that. Offered synergy. Go 
God damn. Oh, hold on. What are these there? Yeah, hold on. Get rid of this. I think these are them. So, skills now be picked multiple times. Okay, so this. So, now I can specifically choose. You see, this is new. This is something that never existed in, with me in the past. I think this is where it can be specific. So, now over here. So, this is skill inclination. Increases the chance that active skills of a certain type will be offered to you when you level up. By selecting that, I can then focus to I want where skills to show up more of a specific type that are either fire, slam, or shadow, or thrust, swing, holy. So you can build specifically that way. Same way in the fact that you are guaranteed to be offered only the skills that contain a certain type the first time you are offered active skills. Reroll, weapon expert. We'll take that. We'll take that. Multiple times. So you can see it can become, you can actually tailor the bolts quite a lot, especially when you start activating runes. Let's take that, and okay, so that's all I can fit, because I've got 8 out of 9, and probably if there's one over here randomly that did like 1. Okay, cool. Let's go character. Let's take my barbarian. And also, you'll see here, with my barbarian... For example, on the first map, I have completed through all of the curses. On this one, I haven't done the last one, I don't think. Yeah, I've gone all the way up to 6. And this is on 4, that's on 5, that's on 3. So let's just take the first map, we're going to turn off all curses and we're just going to run it like it's bog standard. And let's see the difference. Now, this is one of the benefits of it is on the right hand side i can now reroll banish or lock a skill so let's say for example this um yeah abdominal i don't want that shit. banish it that means it's never going to show up on my screen again Okay, so we're gonna reroll Bloodlust. With this, there's a specific build that we are trying to do. Which is why I ran the Barbarian for such a long time. Let's take powerful strikes. Multicast on that. Piercing shout, yes. Bolts coming together nicely. I've already got three out of the things that I need. So this, 
weakens all nearby enemies, reducing their armor. I just need to get the duration of this and the cooldown down, and then obviously the range. Relentless activates more frequently. That automatically means my duration and my cooldown is close to one another. Oh, you're busy lying in bed with you watching on your phone. No worries at all, man. I hope you have a lovely evening further. Get some rest. And I'll see you tomorrow. And tomorrow, we are probably going to do some... Another game. Multicast and... Reroll. 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 Yeah, well, let's go with Blade Storm. Have a lovely evening, brother man. Look after yourself, and I'll see you tomorrow, bro. Thanks for coming, as always. Subdue, perfect. And now we want damage increase on that. Beautiful. We're now sitting at 10 second duration, 16 seconds, 6 second, 1 second. Okay, we need to get the duration up and then we need area. And the boss is dead. Nice. So let's grab some burn. Scent of blood. Scent of blood. Yes. Only thing I need to replace is this whirlwind. But we'll get there. Right now we just want to base it a lot better. You guys see what I mean? How OP this is going to get, JJ. Let's go with magnetic. Can ignore that. Multicast on everything. How's yes? Start adding some poison. Frequency up. Relentless up. Okay, so now we're up to... F so there's only a 0.4 second cooldown. So that's perfect. So we're good on the piercing shot. We need to get the, um, uh, the area up on that. We still got a four second downtime where we've got nothing on the bloodlust. And like a five, six second downtime on scent of blood. So we want agility and frailty. Movement speed. Multicast. Expanse. That's another boss dead. Increased potency. Expanse. Let's start stacking up some lethality. Lethality. 
increase duration. Yes. Vitality. Venomous, yes. Let's go with Vicious Strike. 100% critical on the first hit. Always. Attack speed. Let's go with expense. Uh, let's go with some more lethality. What are you up to this evening, JJ? Yeah, already up to 65% critical chance. Hey, nice, you know, you just relax and chilling. Go with powerful strike. Let's make the attacks do more damage than what they're currently doing. You see the difference in the in the builds of what this character is versus the other character that I already started. And the boss is dead. Okay, so currently potency isn't the problem. Frequency is only a 0 0.1 second. Okay, so that's fine. I don't need pot I don't need frequency of that anymore. That's only on 50%. You know what? Let's get up to 75%. And I've got almost a guarantee on applying burn. area of effect of everything you're about to see everything on my screen get a lot bigger the potency though i won't mind taking but let's gonna go for power strikes first Let's go with some more frailty. I think I'm not going to start banishing stuff. Because there's certain things I don't need to have show up anymore. I 
Okay, so for example, first things first, we're going to banish the attack speed on a specific thing. I'm going to lock that because I want it for next round. The frequency of this, I'll take that. Okay, boss is dead. That was cool. Okay, what is my critical chance? So if I take that, okay, we're on seventy percent critical chance. Okay, let's do let's do infinite. The enemies now have a lot more health, as you might have noticed. Let's turn that off. Damage increase. No. So I want expense, definitely. Um, multi cost. Leviathan, banish. I never want to see that fucker again. Two, four, six. We'll take this one more time and then we'll banish it afterward. That way I've got the most effect out of it. I don't need to see it again after that. Okay, so increased. So magnetic, yes. So we currently apply. I have a 30% chance to apply. Nah. I'm going to take one behemoth. And that's it for now. Okay, so multicast on that can get banished. I don't need that again, so I can banish that. That will put me up to 100%, but I think we'll take multicast instead. Okay, we'll take Relentless. Actually, this is on 30, 60. Let's take it up to 90%. Frequency, yep, again, that's changed it to a 2.4 second downtime where we don't have it active. Instead of 4 seconds, that's good. Um, we don't actually want any of these, but I don't have any banishes left. I'll get some more banishes in a bit. So, let's just grab resilience. Yeah, just in case I do get hit. Behemoth for health. Agility. Multicast. Increased potency. Yeah, let's go for more potency. Relentless. Frailty. Duration, yeah, let's make it last longer. 7.3 seconds and it's got a 6 second cooldown. So before the skill is even done, it's already good to go. We can increase the duration of this as well, because that's going to now make it, yeah, 13 second duration, 12 second cooldown. So we're finally on the positive side of that. That's a boss. Boss is dead. And I fucked up because I kind of like ran into... Damaging skill there. Um, increased potency of this. Movement speed and cast frequency. Yep. Increased potency. Powerful strike. And touch ice to slow. Okay, so I'm standing dead still. Something was actually able to hit me because it had range to it. Okay. 
So, let's go with Touch of Ice, Relentless, Magnetic, and Frequency on this. Meaning we are perfectly duration 10.4, cooldown 10.4. So there's not a single bit of downtime in any of my buffs and debuffs. Multicast, Legendary. Let's go with Frailty. Frailty I'm now stacking because it does a percentage... A percentage debuff on an enemy to apply extra damage based on the amount of stacks that I have. So 10% chance per stack means I've got 5 stacks. That's a 50% chance to apply Frailty. And currently that will mean a 15% um, increase in damage that enemies take that are afflicted with Frailty. Lethality. My critical charge is now up to 80%. Let's go with Behemoth. I need more banishes. Send the blood. I don't know if I fucked it because I know there is an option that allows you to get more um, banishes as you play. But I don't know if I just, because I didn't click, um, select the right um, rune or if it was a skill that I missed. Like I said, I haven't played this game in forever. Damage increase. Blood reduction, area of effect. Watch it get even bigger now. The circle is almost off the screen for me. Touch of ice and more agility. Yeah, circle's going crazy. And the funny thing is, the circle ain't the thing doing all the damage. The circle is what's stacking all of the... Um, all of the elements onto the enemies. I don't know if you see just above, like where my cursor currently is. You see there's like an X between attacks. Like this was like a... Like, I don't know if you can see it, but I mean like literally on my where my cursor is. Yeah, that's the thing that's actually doing lock all the killing. Multicast, gangrene, agility, and damage increase. Is there a way to tell? I uh, can't tell right now, I suppose I have to. Yeah. Expose weakness. Oof. Damage increase. Damage increase. Always attack speed. More area of effect. So let's see how big the circle is and how big the circle gets. Even bigger. The circle is now literally covering the entire screen. I'm doing damage to the boss and I don't know where the boss is. Okay, boss is dead. Let's go with area of effect. more fragility, there's now a 60% chance. I want to try and see an enemy. I can't catch. 
yeah okay so just on this enemy that we've hit 12 stacks of bleed 54 stacks of slow 16 stacks of doom 15 stacks of um, poison two stacks of hemorrhage and six stacks of armor breaking while taking more damage Expansive. Let's make the area of effect even bigger. And again, even bigger. Okay, so I'm standing still. There's a boss somewhere. Oh, there's the boss. The boss was dead before I found it. Multicast. Oh, there we go. I'm going to lock area of effect. Take fragility. Lock magnetic. Take area of effect. You can't even see the circle anymore, brother. That enemy had 378,000 health before he died. Increased potency. Let's go with multicast and powerful strikes. And you see, now you can understand how I was sitting on hundreds of thousands of coins. Because if you do the barbarian build, and you go for this build specifically, sometimes the whirlwind differs for something else. But I mean, like if we read the stats. So... Slash enemies around you quickly, causing damage every 0.3 seconds. Number of hits, it's 20. The damage is 189. And it's 4.8 cooldown. Okay? However, there's a 110% damage modifier, a 190% area modifier, and a 108% multicast chance. So if we go to some of the skill breakdown... The blade storm so far has already done 77 million damage it has hit 94,000 times the dps is 83,000 per second my next closest skill is only 7.4 i could probably run a infinite onto this for quite a while but i think i'm gonna end it over there And from that, we got two of every kind of stone, and we got 35,000 miners, and then we got a whole bunch of materials collected. And those materials just get used at the blacksmith. So I need 30, I need what, yeah, I need 40 more of the meteorite. Now, the only way you get meteorite is the Whispering Grove. So that would be... Over here. However, 
materials in order for you to gain so uh, let's deactivate these quickly if you do a normal run you've got a very low chance of finding that you see I don't know if you saw that so these are curses to make the runs harder one two three four five meaning I have to run this map on a minimum with four stages and each one has got their own curses I have to run this map on a minimum of four stages with all curses active to be able to get the meteorite to be able to make the next uh, back to be able to make the next weapon the blood god's legacy and that's the stats and then of course the skill tree that gets more insane as we go but yeah okay I actually think that is as good a place as any for me to leave it for the evening. Yeah, it's it's got a PoE vibe when it comes to that. Now, the thing that makes this skill tree nice is that the only only the centerpiece, the center circle, only this applies to all characters. Everything else specializes into a specific character. So for the barbarian, the class I was just playing, only this section applies to him. So it's not nearly as confusing as PoE. It's not nearly as broad and intersecting as PoE. But, I mean... And you won't have access to the whole thing the very first time. You have to do specific legs of a character before you start seeing all this. But yeah. But I actually think that is a good place for me to leave it for the evening. JJ. Thank you very much for being here tonight. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate the love and support that you've shown so far. To everybody else who's watching this after the fact, come and join the live stream next time. Help grow the channel. Reach out to friends and family. Spread the love. It would mean a lot to me. I am trying to grow this channel. I am trying to provide you more content. I am trying to bring you more entertaining content. The only way I can do that is by growing and by getting feedback from you. And... Don't forget, all of my past live streams do get uploaded onto my YouTube channel, so go show some love. That way you, if you missed one, you know where to catch it. But I hope you have a lovely day and or evening further, depending on where you're from. But until tomorrow night, look after yourselves and be safe.